what's going on everyone hello 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 how are you all doing out there thank you so much for tuning into another great epic episode of just my opinion reviews guys we are talking shogun or shogun season one shogun. episode three titled tomorrow is tomorrow after blackthorn survives a brazen assassination attempt Tornaga realizes he must ferry his allies out of Osaka or risk certain death or a certain defeat, excuse me. Guys, I want to let you know that this is going to be a spoiler field recap, okay? Me and my lovely guests, we are going to spoil this episode up, down, left, right, in, and out as if you've already seen it. That is your warning. And like I said, my goodness gracious, I am joined again by Miss Kimberly Curran from Southern California. Ma'am, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. It's rainy out here. We got crazy rain. I know you out there, you got fire, man. The, the world's on fire, but you know what's keeping me at peace? So good. Yes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's what's up right there. <laughs> Yeah, man. Thank you for being here, Kim. I really do appreciate it. I'm excited to talk about this episode with you. And guys out there, when you're watching this, if you love what me and Miss Kim have to say, you can follow both of us on social media. Also, her information will be in the description box of this video. And here is her channel as well that we're going to be talking about a little bit towards the end of this video recording. But man, go ahead and show this lovely lady some support and give her a subscription. But Kim, let's go ahead and jump into this. This show is fire. Everyone's talking about it up, down, everywhere. And I don't blame them because it's great. Episode two ended fantastic with the secret assassin who Mariko said, hey, man, some of these assassins, they were trained their entire life for just one kill. It's a high price. One kill. And I one kill. kill. I think that's what happened here. This this assassin that was part of the maid's crew has been chilling with Toranaga for a minute, just waiting for her for her her people to call on her like a like a secret cell, you know, sleeper cell. The excuse Society me. Society of like, the Amida. Right, right, right. An evil sect, as as Miss Mariko put it, and she was unsuccessful, thank God. But they're still coming after. They're still coming. She after still threw down back. though. Yeah, she she did. She, she took stood on business that whole time. She was like, yeah. and you're in my way, and you're in my way. I was like, dang, girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And people continue to switch sides. I mean, who can we trust Yabashuge? He's going over to, uh, he's going back and forth to Tawanaga. Then he's going uh, back and forth to Ishido. You know, where is he going to end up at the end of this series? I don't know whose side he's really on, and we can trust him. You know, and I'm really listening to you more and more. What you saying? You know, he's a bitch. I don't think those are your exact words, but I think that's what you meant. But let me let me give it to you. How did you feel about this episode? Is it is it still meeting or exceeding your expectations? As far as I'm concerned, I'm highly entertained. I'm loving it. But where are you at on this episode three? I'm highly entertained. I love that they kept the seriousness, but I did chuckle quite a bit through this episode. Definitely more than episode one and two. Um, yeah. I found my joy, <laughs> I found my yeah. joy in the pocket over here. And um, I really am, am liking Tornaga more and more and more because this man, he knows what the game is. He knows what the game is. And, and he was like, unless um, Hiro Matsui like ever betrays him, I don't think you'll ever hear this man say, I'm so shocked that so-and-so betrayed me. I'm so hurt that so-and-so betrayed me. He he said clear as day to his son, oh, son, you know, you're so naive. This is a game about enemies and friends. That's all this is. And he's like, yeah. dad, you want me to go over there with Yabushige? Like, obviously he's 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 playing in, in Iroshido's pocket. Like, and he's like, I know, that's just the game. And I, I really respected that because I think throughout history and like a lot of historical movies, whether it's it's a political movie or different cultures or, or um, you see people fighting for power and there's always that one person that's like, how do you not see all of the deception around you? Like you've got to see that you're in this right. super high place of power and everyone's trying to get to your throne. And there's this naivete 
I really respect that Tornaga is not naive about the mm -hmm. game. He yeah. understands the game. And I, I found a lot of humor in the way he played it too. Yeah, I, I did too. I think they said that he learned that when he was six years old too, as well, when he got He's traded. He's been playing games since he was a kid. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Ma Ma him and Mariko are like this, you know, but Basaz, uh, who are Matsu, uh, that will betray him or possibly betray him where he, you may, you said that he may say, I was shocked by this. I think he'll feel extremely shocked if Mariko, uh, turns her back on him as well. I don't, I don't foresee that coming, but uh, I think he's always are... checking on her though. He's like, Hey, how are you with your faith right now? Like he, cause he right. knows she's a devout Christian. So he is always, I think he wouldn't ask those questions if he wasn't sudden. Like he's still like, remember this, this uh, having another religion in Japan is new to them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So for yeah. those who are not Christians are like, Hey, how are you with the devotion? Are you still going to Bible study? Like every Wednesday, are we still doing Sunday school before the service? Like, you know, like, he, so to speak, like he still is checks up on her about like, How's your faith? Are you offended? Are you challenged? Is this you go deeper in your faith? Are you are you stepping away? Because that's cool too. I mean, you know. So I think there's always that too, though. Okay, I uh, I see where you're coming from. I'm not mad at that argument. I, I I still think that she's a bit loyal. She just hasn't shown as much. Um, you know, she just hasn't been around that long uh, as Har Haramatsu. Uh, but I think she's good though. Or Hiro Hiramatsu. I think she's good though. But you know, that, that's very observant of you. You're you're right there. I also do agree with you. This episode was quite funny, um, especially at the beginning where uh, the engine, the barbarian uh, Blackthorn is trying to into his wounds. And he's calling the dude, a warlock, the doctor that's trying to, you know, help him out. You know, just kind of his commentary right there. I got to laugh at. Uh, also, just the back and forth. Uh, between Blackthorn and Rodriguez as they're screaming at each other on the ships. You know, he's making... Oh, a... your mom, your mom. <laughs> that was hilarious. Yeah, yeah. I, I got a lot of laughs um, out, out of them too. I wasn't expecting that. During such a, a high intensity, high tension moment, you know, them trying to uh, escape the harbor and escape out of a, a soccer. And it's just crazy. I mean, these are grown men and women that are being held hostage in, in Osaka. And, you know, Ishido just, uh, he's up on his little made, you know, man-made throne trying to dictate everything. I know that you're the leader of Osaka and uh, Toranaga is the leader of Ido, but it's just a nerve for you to come in and just like, no, I want to approve the, and, and, and the way he tries to frame it, like, oh, we need a day's notice before you leave the castle just so I can show my respects. Like, come on, man. You're this guy a, is the homeowners association. Like he yeah. is the president of the HOA. Like yeah. he is that guy that's like, seriously, you're going to measure my flag. Get away from me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, even, uh, but I want to ask you this though. Uh, even before that, I, I feel really sorry for Fuji. Um, because you know, oh, her okay. husband was running his mouth and doing episode one. And not only did he have to commit the, was it Kim Puko? or Kenpootsu, I forgot the exact pronunciation of them having to uh, sacrifice himself, but, you know, had to kill the baby too, the newborn. And she is uh, looking over the remains of her dead husband and child and just kind of have to endure that. That's just so wild to me that that's just accepted at doing this part. I don't, I don't think that's accepted in, in Japan today, or at least I hope not, my goodness gracious. But man, for them, for that just to be normal life, you know, if somebody just speaks out of turn, you know, not only that to kill yourself, but your, you know, your your only it's child, crazy, you know, yeah. that's, that's, that's horrible. Like, um, I, I felt really sorry for her. I mean, where where are you on on that too? Um, did, did, I mean, I, this is this is her origin story, man. This is her origin story. I got to be honest. In the beginning, um, you know, I thought she was just going to be a side character of like, oh, this this guy spoke out of turn. This is his wife. This is the baby's mother. It's important to show her. But it turns out her father was a samurai. And I actually didn't real I didn't realize till this episode the connection that she's um Hiramatsu's granddaughter. I didn't I didn't make that connection in the first two episodes. And so I'm like, oh, that's his granddaughter. But I love the story he told of how he and his son, her father, um, they were like bad arse samurai on the field kicking ass and taking names like 
she comes from a lineage of badassness. So, mm -hmm. and the way he, he kind of knows like this woman, like I, she needs purpose. And it seems like this is a theme amongst the females in the show that they live for purpose, whether um, it seems that it starts out that their purpose is to serve, the purpose is to serve your husband, the purpose is to serve your, your government, your purpose is to serve your family. So they made kind of a, a big deal out of that in that first episode when she said, you're taking it. She didn't even actually say you're taking away my son. She said, you're taking away my purpose in life. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's interesting that Hiramatsu is like giving her a purpose. I just saw, I saw an origin story built when, when he, when she was grieving and he was like, your father was a great samurai. And, and now it's, it's time for you. I want you to go. Um, with us to is I think it's a keto. Um, Ajiro. Uh, where are they going? Ajiro, thank you. Ajiro, I want you to go with us, like not just to get out of town, but it's time for you to step it up. I kind of felt like that conversation between her grandfather and her was like, I'm sorry, but hey, you do purpose. It's time for you to step it up. We're making moves, and the moves we're making, everybody could lose their life. We've got to take a stand and want you to be part of this. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they kept showing the shots of the, the swords, um, you know, the samurai swords and how that was passed down. Um, they was war, you know, having war in Korea. I know that comes up at another point, if not already in the show. I kind of want some backstory mm -hmm. on that, too. Like what exactly they was fighting for? Um, mm -hmm. You know, what was the reason? Who was right? Who was wrong? But there's a lot of history there. And I like how you said that as far as the uh, origin story of uh, Miss Fuji. But I felt very, I felt, I felt very uh, sorry for her, and uh, I'm pretty sure that we're going to see yeah. a lot of her. And just look at, I just, I'm, I'm loving just the whole set and just the details and the floor and, and the all details. the lines, just the costumes. This is just, this is just amazing to me. The way uh, they are with their garments. I noticed when um, Hiramatsu, when he sat down, when he was addressing Ishido at the end, and the, yeah. those long. I wish I knew more yeah. about the costumes, but. Kudos to the the designers and the the set dressers and the the set designers. Is now I'm going to research. I do want to know more. And um, his garment, just the way he stretched his arms out to get that fabric out of the way, it was just so regal and commanding. And I just, it's those little details I'm really loving about the show. And like we talked about last time. Um, the producers having um, Hiroyuki Sonata as a producer, he brought in so many actors in Japanese ancient culture of those feudal times to make sure they knew how to write calligraphy, they knew how to sit, they knew how to pour tea, tea open, how to open a door. Mm -hmm. Basis, you know, for in the 1600s, how they would do it to here, it was the little details like that that I just am really loving with this show. It's very rich. Yep, yep, yep. You, you're one hundred percent right on that. Like the, yeah, the way that he, you know, threw out his garment, you know, put his knuckles down, and the way they bowed, and the angle, and the arching of the back, you know, the Beautiful. way the head is tilted, all of that is, um, you can tell they did that homework and was like, look, we, we got to get this right. We, we, we definitely have yeah. to get this right. You know, um, uh, something else I kind of skipped over it just at the the very opening scene, um, uh, when Toranaga was talking to Yubishige. And he said, hey, I heard that Ishido visited your house yesterday. Uh, what did he want? You know, uh, you know, what did he offer you? No, excuse me. And he was like, he offered your seat on the council. He's like, oh, did that interest you? He know that he did. I, I don't, I don't know. You, you, Yubushige kind of gave a deep sigh and was like, you know, no, it didn't. He was like, well, I know you want something. What do you want? He was like, I want to, I want to increase my fief, my salary. Mm -hmm. I want more of a uh, Saraga, I think was the name of the. The body the of the province, man. yeah. Uh, Saruga Providence. There you go. Thank Saruga. You. Thank, Saruga. Thank, you. Thank you. It just kind of goes back to where you're saying, um, you know, Taranaga and the show just saying that, you know, he, you know, talking to his son towards the end, you know, you're playing these silly games of friends and enemies. It's just like, look, I'm just using everybody to kind of get what I want. I don't trust nobody. This is who you chest, are. just like you said. Yeah. And, and so, uh, he knows what he's like. What do you want? He was like, well, if you do this or you don't do this, you can have that body of land. I just need you to get um, the barbarian, the engine out of Osaka and also Kiri no Kata. 
uh, during the next scene, which we'll we'll talk about as well. And so I just kind of had to shed some light on that uh, because uh, Tuanaga just showed no emotion. He knew what it was, you know. Uh, he he knows how to articulate and communicate, and you know, make sure that he gets his point across, and um, just kind of makes him, you know, a fantastic lead. And I'm 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 glad he's at the the uh, the head of this show right now. Uh, but right at, right after that, though, before uh, Ashido comes, um, they have created this this trickery, this plan uh, to <laughs> I escape, love that plan to escape out of of Osaka, and I love it. I didn't see it coming. I did not see it coming. You know, I thought I had to rewind. I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's she's one of the ladies that's pretending that's pregnant is acting like she's having some contractions, you know, while they're pulling old banana in the tailpipe, snake move, be smoke screen, you know, sneaking out and sneaking in. I'm like, oh snap, you know, and and half of the people didn't even realize what was going on until after the fact. So I, I just thought that love was uh, I just thought that was brilliant. Um, I loved it. Just also like even when Oshido's men came in, and so they're in a sock, of course which Ashido is the head of. But I guess Tuanaga had his own area that was, you know, that was um, uh, assigned to him because he had his own guards at the gate. But when Josen came through part of Ishido's men, you know, they're holding up their, their spears or whatever weapon it is, and they just kind of muff them out the way. I'm just like, oh, my goodness gracious, like this hierarchy of power right here. Uh, that was interesting to me. Um, I did like that. It looked like Ashido got in a stance and he was about to pull out his sword or something to attack when they was opening the doors to verify who was in those little crates. I know it's not really called a crate. I don't know the the, the, the uh, Japanese. Palanquin. I think it's a palanquin. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. There you go. That's why I Where you want. carry the women on the shoulder and they sit inside, which I'm like... First class, luxury. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, and they should bring us back. <laughs> yeah, not only not only so they won't have to walk through you know all of this terrain, but also protection from bandits that come through you know later on. But yes. you know it was interesting. It looked like a sheet that was about to throw down, but no, they was uh p- pulling snake moves and snuck Kira no Kata out, and then you know uh yeah, tore in. And I, I I really did like that, but. As you said, the t- or the tension was high, and I did get a laugh out of the, the theatrics that Blackthorn was screaming at the top of. This is an outrage! Oh my goodness, you cannot leer at that a woman. Was, yeah, that was my spot. Like that was such a great moment right there. Like this is my dude. Okay, Blackthorn, yeah. I'm liking you more and more yeah. and more. And when he said, "And your hair." Looks like a bunny's tail, and I was like, "Oh, <laughs> I was like, oh wait, okay." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. so. That was such a great moment. But the way he's like Blackthorn is, he's, I'm, I'm not lost in how desperate he is for this tour, because it was mm-hmm. such a gamble for him to leave England like that. Um, because he's not really, he's not a pirate per se. Um, sure. he's an opportunist. Um, he's not necessarily a pirate. He's not a merchant. He's a, he's a guy that that got a hold of some journals and and was took the opportunity. It's like he kind of is that guy that's saying, "Why not me?" Everybody discovering new land. Why not me? Right, right. And and he's desperate to do this, you know, to get this done. So mm-hmm. he's he's like, mm-hmm. "I'll help you." He's proving himself more and more and more. He's proving like, look, we're we're kind of it's kind of a we're all in this together kind of thing. You know, I'm a part of this now, so I'm going to lay myself down, too. Yeah, make the best out of it, you know. Um, Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's just trying to show his worth. You know, he doesn't want to just, you know, sit on the sideline and just like, you know, hey, I'm not going to do anything, not going to do anything to help contribute to this situation. Like you said, I'm a part of this. And so I got to pull my own weight, too. And he definitely does that at the end. And, uh, you know, Rodriguez gave him the look of respect, which, you know, we'll talk about that. But uh, even before that, how do you feel about Rodriguez and um, his conversation that he was having <laughs> with the captain of the black ship at the early early on? Like, you know, the captain's like, look, I don't need the permission from Tornaga to leave, you know, the coast. And Martin is trying to tell him, like, look, man, if you do this without permission, you're going to ruin our relationship for the future. He's like, I got one million ducats and I'm not going to miss this land. We are leaving tonight. Make it known. And he goes out. 
uh, and talks to uh, Rodriguez and was like, this this engine, this barbarian is causing all the troubles. And, you know, uh, we know, I, I guess, yeah, I answered my own question. Rodriguez doesn't like uh, uh, Blackthorn or respect him, you know, because he was about to attack him on the boat and realize that he was a pirate. But, you know, you I, I don't know. Can he be trusted as well? Or, or do you like him? How, I know you don't like y- Yabushige. I know you love Toranaga, but... How are you feeling about the captain yeah. and uh, and and uh, Rodriguez at this point? Honestly, I'm beginning to see that Rodriguez and Blackthorn are the same person. They're in the complete same boat. Okay. They are the token outsider that is gaining just enough trust to survive another day. Because yeah. when how the, they killed his man in that big pot of broth with the quickness. They didn't blink twice about making some man suit, okay? And so the fact that these foreigners, these outsiders, these barbarians are la- every 24 hours is a gift for them. <laughs> and um, being able to, to learn the language and have some value to teach something, to come with some value as the outsider. It's like, look, outsider, if I'm gonna let you live, you gotta show me some value. So he, Rodriguez is a value as a translator. He's a value um, to have, you know, coming through with his ways, how, wherever he's from and however they did things and whoever he knows from his side of the pond. You know, if they ever run into someone from his family or his tribe or his clan or his government, he could be of use. So I see that Rodriguez and Blackthorn, they're both in the same boat. And their attitude with each other is, it's that I'm the token outsider, Oh, now, now you, now look, there can only be one of us. Don't bother me. I got something going. Well, don't bother me. I'm getting something going. Now, Tornaga, he's changing my name and, and, you know, we're swimming. And you know what I'm saying? Like, they're yeah. both in the same exact spot. And so their hatred for each other is not necessarily a hatred. It's a don't screw this up for me. We're both outsiders. We both right, came right, into right. this country not speaking the language. So um, I actually, he doesn't bother me that much because to me he and blackthorn are, are just the same it's just that he's on another side or he's right. on whatever side puts money in his pocket right 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 okay now um i like that and y'all let us know if you agree or disagree but you know kim is coming through with the, the fire commentary and speak about fire they're being attacked in the forest on their journey from osaka to Edo or ajiro but before that, Kim, uh, unfortunately, you know, um, thank you, FX, for the opportunity to see this, but we, we're not blessed with subtitles. And I could not understand what they were saying with uh, Mariko and Blackthorn were saying when they was walking through the forest. For, well, first, I want to note that it does look like their relationship is blossoming, um, that especially mm-hmm. Mariko is trusting Blackthorn a bit more. Uh, but again, when they're having this conversation, He's telling her, like, look, these merchants over here, these Christians, these these these, um, these men, you can't talking about Martine and, and, and the father. You're like, you can't trust him, trust him. But she says something about relations. They're talking about each other's family. He's at he's <laughs> after his kids. He's talking about is that your husband, Bontaro, over there? And she Ooh. says something about the clouds in the rain. I didn't under do you know what I'm talking about? I don't I don't understand what that meant. And she and he she was like, Do you understand what I mean? And he was like, Well, yes, I understand exactly what you mean. You don't have to break it down. I'm just surprised to hear that po- so politely from a woman, especially with her being married. That kind of flew over my head. Um, did you understand that or comprehend it fully? If, if I so think it they, they went back to the joke they made with the doctor where he, you know, he went from calling him a warlock to a pimp. <laughs> I thought it was very funny because as unfortunately as a translator, she was put in that position to translate and go. And actually I think the doctor meant it to be sarcastic. Mm -hmm. Um, Like, ah, this guy's tense. He needs to get laid. Um, Mm -hmm. But she, she translated and was like, he thinks you're stressed and you need to um, uh, be with a a woman or or man, you know, whatever. And he was like, what kind of country am I? So I think they were going back to that conversation when they were walking through the woods. Um, Yeah, yeah, I think that's what it is. Okay, okay. Okay, well, I guess I did understand it. Um, Okay, I was just making sure. Sorry, I'm going to sneeze. I know. (laughs) Excuse me. You're good. Oh, excuse me. (laughs) Bless you, bless you. you, Sorry, the rain here is kicking up all kinds of stuff. (laughs) 
You're good. You're good. But, but man, uh, oh, go. go ahead. Go ahead. But I, no, I agree. I, I was thrown back in the sense of, I thought my perception of Japanese culture is that like the way, at least the show has portrayed husbands behaving towards their wives um, in terms of women being able, like what you can say, what's appropriate to say to another man. That did surprise me because I didn't think from what I was seeing and learning that that would be appropriate to even have that conversation. Makes but sense, I mean, they did. But and, you know, she got to learn more um, about, you know, his his family. And, and, and I was really shocked to hear that he had a family. Yeah, I was, too. Had a, had a boy and a little girl um, that he hasn't met yet. So um, yeah, that's, that's, that's that. quite interesting to me. But what is even more interesting than that, Kim, is the Christians that are attacking the fleet uh, from, from, from the ridge, shooting flaming arrows. Um, that's interesting to me. It, it's just, you know, because when you hear Christian, you know, you kind of, you know, start to thinking about, you know, um, certain morals and values. But these are assassins on the cliff. On a ridge, it's just trying to take out uh, the barbarian because he's causing, you know, th this. I, look, what's his name? Ayama, that's part of the, the one of the regents, the guy in the red. He's clearly only in it for the money. This barbarian is messing up his money, messing up his profits. And this is the second assassination attempt um, that they're, they're making. Um, and then it's exposed that Toranaga is part of, of the fleet. And then you have three sides here. You have Ayama's men and his, 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 and his, he's on the Council of Regents, his men up on the cliff shooting down, and they call him Christians. But at the bottom, you know, you have Taranaga's men with the Shido's men. They're defending themselves, but then they turn in each other when they find yeah, out that, was that weird. is, is, uh, that they're, they're escorting him or whatever. And Yabushige kind of turned sides. All there at the same time, where it 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 it, uh, it confuses Ayama's men up on the ridge, and so that was very entertaining to me. But what stood out the most is at first they were trying to play Mariko as a damsel in distress when the barbarian, when the engine, when Blackthorn was like, you know, get out of here, let's go hide. But she's like, no, f that. We when when Toranaga pulled out his sword, she was like, we have to help them. And she got out there with that spear too, and was just slicing them down. I was like, "Oh, Mono and every, and she was so graceful about it. She was so gracefully throwing down. I was like, "Go ahead, girl." Yes, looking yes. graceful and and just she threw down. She she picked up that knife like it wasn't anything. And her husband too wasn't like, "Oh no, my wife is caught in this." He's like. I should be all right. She can fight. Like, right. <laughs> like he doesn't try to help her at all. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I thought that was interesting. But also, it actually, you you mentioned something really interesting how how people are labeled in this show of like the Christians, and it actually made me think of Jesus when he said, "Many will come in my name and lack the power thereof." And in the hereafter, they will say, Lord, Lord, we knew you. And he'll turn to them and go, turn away from me. I knew you not. So yeah. just because somebody calls themselves a Christian doesn't mean that they are. And that's coming from, <laughs> when I say a song, I kind of mean it. Like, <laughs> like Jesus literally said that a lot of people will come and be like, I'm a Christian too. And yeah. uh, if, if, if I ever looked him in the face, I would go, I never knew you. You're not about me. So I didn't get offended, me personally as a Christian, when they're like, the Christians are coming to kill us. I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Throughout, his, throughout history, many people have come in the name of Christ and lacked the, the power there and the power being the love of God. There's no, they're not, they're not running to hand you Bibles. They're not running to be like, but you didn't sign up for the potluck. Like <laughs> they're not running to minister to you. They're running to kill you. And those are Christians by name and not spirit. So I wasn't offended because unfortunately history is peppered with people who are Christians by name and not spirit. And Jesus himself said, when I say wolves and clothes, this is what I'm talking about. So that's a historical truth. We saw it in the Crusades. We see it um, in colonization throughout the world. So I, I get it. I wasn't offended because I'm like, those are the ones that ain't getting it. 
how you, I love how you phrase that. You know, they're Christian by name, but not the spirit. Um, you know, because they're you know up there just trying to kill this guy because he if he feels they're ruining his profits. And it, the thing is, it's just crazy yeah. to me. It's like Ashido and Ayama are rubbing shoulders together in the same room and the same on the same council of regions. And this man was like, "We can't attack them. Those are Ashido's men down there too." He's like, oh, well, they'll die with a heretic. I'm like, golly. And it's just wild to me, you know, like he just didn't care. It's you know? wild. And and you know, that um was very, I, I don't, I really, I really want to hear some behind the scenes and I will be watching all of behind the scenes commentary I can um, because, you know, um, uh, Hiroyuki Sonata was in John Wick 4 and uh, something very interesting was that amazing shot we from Jack, where they went with the aerial view of Keanu fighting, you know, and it went with that amazing aerial view where you could see the people walking down the hallways. And I'm curious, I saw that in this episode when they were headed towards the harbor and they're like, the Christians, they're catching up. And then they, it went to this amazing aerial view. And all of a sudden you see these torches and yeah. you see how close they're getting to the harbor. And I was wondering if Mr. Sonata was like, let's take a nod from John Wick. Because that was such a John Wick scene right there. That was so yeah. funny. I yeah. loved it. It looked fantastic. The cinematography. It was a great shot. I love a good aerial shot. I love a yeah. That was very cool. I love your excitement level and enthusiasm describing it as yeah. well. The, the geekism is coming out. Um, that's that's what's up right there. Uh, but even before. <laughs> Even before that, um, you know, Bantaro, uh, he was doing his thing with the sword as well. He was being an a-hole to his wife earlier, you know, saying we need to leave Osaka. And, and Mariko's like, I don't understand. It's not your job to understand. Like, he she, he just had a stick up his butt, you know, because, you know, she's doing her job, like Toronaga said, you know, he needs to do. But he did his thing with the sword, man. Um, you know, I don't know. Kim, he's, a, he's an honorable lawyer. Like she said, yeah. he's a very esteemed lawyer. He's not... On the battlefield, he's not a punk, but I think something beautiful from the last episode I meant I wanted to mention um, was um, was it is it Kiri um, Kiri? Yes, Toranaga's first wife. Um, their relationship was so precious. The way uh, the way he talked to her was so cute, and it just showed me that during this time, the way Mariko's being treated by her husband that wasn't an every household kind of thing. Right. Because her husband's very cruel and jealous of her, but Torna was so like, did you see like in front of um, <laughs> in front of Mariko? He was like, she's like, but I'm just a slow old lady, and he's like, it's because you got a big ass. Like they yeah. were like joking with each other, and she's mm -hmm. like, oh, honey, yeah. don't say that yeah. in front of every. Like they were actually really cute, and mm -hmm. um, just the way she was like joking with him, it was like a in love couple for over 30 years it wasn't like yeah this is my wife you know to be seen and not heard so it's, right. for me that proved that the history of this world that i mean look there's some cultures where that's how it is you are a woman you will get beaten if you speak up her um her husband didn't need to be so mean to her he that was not. just a jealousy thing but i have a question for you brandon what's up do you think he's dead um no because the age, age old age old thing if unless i saw a body just like right. with a marvel movie or if i didn't see someone get lowered into the ground i don't know i think he's presumed dead by mariko and right. definitely by black um, right right but i don't know that we're not yeah, going to see I, him what do yeah. you think i i'm i'm confident that he's not dead because i mean they gave him a nice send off for one um, I, I like that, that he, you know, he, he knows how to fight. Um, he was, yeah. he was taking them out one by one, having them come down a line, you know, so they couldn't surround him. So he knows what he's doing. He didn't take any injury. Uh, they, they went out of their way to make him look like a badass. Was like, Hey, y'all go, I'll catch up with you guys. And then he caught up yeah. with him. And then he was surrounded by three, four or five men. And he still took all of them off, took all of them out. Bowed to Tuanaga. That was dope as hell. It was it was lovely. Ran up there. That was but he positioned himself to back himself down that corridor 
Um, and nobody could get behind them. It's like, you know, the strategy of, um, you know, 300 or whatever, you know, like, you know, have them come down this, this narrow shaft and, you know, you can't get surrounded. Mm -hmm. And he didn't, he didn't take one blade, one blow. And so, no, I don't think he's dead at all. I think he may pop back up. Um, Blackthorn yeah. did give his condolences, but prematurely, yeah. I believe. And I like the fact that um, Blackthorn was like, look, we can't just leave him behind. You know, we got to go get him. They're really trying to redeem his character because they, uh, yeah. you know, they made him seem like he was an evil pirate and, you know, a lying and manipulating barbarian. But he it keeps doing these things episode by episode, you know, just showing yeah. how honorable he may be. You know, it made me call back to when Rodriguez fell in the water. I know you and I were talking about how we thought he was just playing the game. Like, he kind of was, because he was kind of like this Yabashige guy. I can already tell within 10 minutes I don't like him. I'm going to give him this rope. Why don't you rescue him? And he he wanted him to die. But actually, it made me, the way he was with Mariko's husband, it made me think, you know what? Does he really carry this? kind of honor amongst thieves kind of kind of honor of like i don't care what situation i mean we don't leave a man behind like right. maybe that's real yeah i think i don't it know is. i think i think it yeah, is yeah i think I, it, it might be yeah I, i'm not gonna go as far as saying that he's my hero or anything like that you know because they they did the show's not over people. yet man yeah. it's not so, over yet my bad i'm i'm clicking all types of stuff my phone <laughs> <laughs> my fault, my fault. Uh, but the uh, glitching, bro. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that, guy, y'all. But uh, yeah, show's not over yet. We're gonna we're gonna have to see. Uh, but I, yeah, I don't think that uh, Bontaro's dead. I don't think that you know you know we're, we're, the judge the ju jury is still out on um, on the engine on Blackthorn. Also, on that same note, um, Toranaga clearly uh, cared. Um, Yabashige didn't. He's like, no, we're not turning around. No. And that's expected. I kind of wanted a bit more emotion from his wife, Mariko. She didn't, she would, she wasn't like, oh, baby, no. She would just kind of like, ah, you know, I guess it's your time but, to go. You know. But also but it's it's honor and dishonor because just like um when uh let me get his name, I don't want it, uh Tadayoshi, even when he stood up to stand up for Tornaga, it's kind of dishonorable to stand up for somebody or speak out for how you feel about them in a certain way, because it kind of, what I'm getting from the show is it kind of makes it seem like I need your pity. And it's mm -hmm. like, it is very honorable for a warrior to die a warrior's death. And so for, I think for her to cry out for her husband would have been dishonoring. Really? Okay. That situation is what I felt. I think she might've, however conflicted she is about his abusive, like toxic behavior and he's always gaslighting her and disrespecting her um i think i think what i kind of feel like i'm learning of this culture is that would have been that would have dishonored him to okay. cry out for him and show pity because remember that when they were saying um near the rocks and when, when blackburn was asking look he was holding his knife towards himself what yeah. was up with that and they were like for a warrior it is honorable to choose the way you want to die. That's true. And That's so true. I think that would have dishonored his decision because he could have gotten the, the water and started swimming. Well, you know, like, I don't know, but I don't know. I think I think it was more of a, let's just, he bowed. Look, he knew he was doing. He right. bowed at Tornaga. He I contact and was like, I'm choosing this. You guys go ahead. And then he ran back up the ramp. So... Yeah, I think it would have been dishonorable to be like, no. I got you. Okay, okay. Good point. Good point. Good point. Uh, transitioning from that, the captain of the black ship was very annoying to me with his arrogance. <laughs> I hate that guy. Yeah, because when uh, Toronaga was like, ah, okay, I didn't give them permission to leave the harbor, to leave Osaka. I'm in a bind now. And so, hey, y'all ship is bigger than ours. Okay, so can we? But can if you're going to leave, I'm coming with you. You go, I go. Yeah. <laughs> you leave, <laughs> I leave. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, he's like, he's like, he's like, hey, man, uh, thank you for giving us permission that uh, we didn't need. Okay, and the price has gone up, you know. And I was like, you son of a B. You know, I was like, like, he could cut your throat at any moment. I wouldn't get cocky, sir. I don't think you don't look like you could fight. 
Okay, yeah, so, so. It's the arrogant it's bit, bro. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure that in a fist fight or a sword fight, whatever, a tornado will come out on top by light years. But so the captain will pull out that pistol on him too. So, you know, I, I'm. I'm just saying. I'm. 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 He. I'm. He got it on him. He got it on him. So he. 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 He don't seem like he, he can't fight. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But I'd be like, put the pistol down and let's fight man to man. They, they don't give a damn about that. Uh, you know, they don't, they don't, you know, no. they don't care about that. So, but, you, know, you you right though, but um, yeah, not y'all be shit, but Tornaga offered him like, hey man, um, first of all, what I need you to do is get the I'll let y'all leave, but I need you to get the um the uh Ayami and oh no two Christians that are part of the Council of Regents on our side because they rub and sh yeah. rub and shoulders with a Shido and I also give you a church in Edo. I would think yeah, that would be like, oh hell yes, let's make this exchange, let's shake hands. The father was like, yeah. oh no, that's bribery and the captain was like, that's still not good enough. Okay, I'll give you some silver. No, okay, I'll take that. But then you got to leave the engine here and they gave him the notebook showing that he was a pirate. That was a tough bargain right there. I thought it would be, you know, just easy. Hey, you know, shake hands and we're done. But they was really, you know, uh, ten toes down with, with, with their pride. It was like, you know, we run the show, not y'all. You know what I'm saying? We don't need you. And so it, it ended up working out for everybody. But I was just really rolling my eyes over here. Uh, do you feel the same or do you disagree? Where where are you at on that whole little? Yeah, I mean, the negotiating, it's, it's not just negotiating. It's, it's that. And I mean. I'm not a guy, but I can only speak to what I've seen in films and read, but it's that, it's the power. It's, it's, it's like the weak link. That's like another situation. You'd be pissing your pants, but because this powerful man is coming to you and coming to your level and reasoning with you and negotiating with you. Now you want to act a fool and be like, Oh, well, now that you need something, I don't <laughs> think that's good enough. It's like, yeah. Yeah. You can cut your throat. Like, stop messing around. Stop playing around. Um, because as you saw from Father Alvito, having a church, like getting permission to establish a church, what I'm learning from this show is that's helpful because you don't want to be against the Japanese people. You want to, you know, you're trying to convert them. You're trying to be with them. So you're probably trying to negotiate for land for a church all the time. So for someone to give you a church in their big, in Edo, which seems like a really big, uh, um, successful place, you don't want to turn that away and be like, oh no, it was, he, like judging by his excitement, I'm like, this is, this seems like it's something that's hard for these priests to come by. Right. But again, right. Alvito is more, I think he might be more of a real man of faith. Because the other guy, it wasn't really bribery. It was negotiation. Yeah. So the other guy, high and mighty and religious, who I call a Pharisee, was like, oh, no, no, we can't take that. We can't take that. And he's like, dude, yes, we can. He's giving a land to build a church. Like, So yeah. I think it's just, I don't want it, to, it's just, it's a power play. It's a power play that might come to you. And I think something that to, to remember about Blackthorn and the relationship with the Portuguese is right now the Portuguese, the Spaniards, um, you know, they're almost 20 years into bringing Catholicism to Japan. All it's going to take is one English ship where everyone didn't die to come over and be like, we're English. Any other English here that have made some good deals and relationships? I have. Blackthorn over here. I've made a great relationship with this Toronaga guy. And the English will come in and usurp the Portuguese in such a strong way. Because don't remember, Blackthorn is also a representative. Now, he's not a formal ambassador or anything, but if any more English come, he's going to be friends. They're going to be friends and they're going to want to know, like, hey, what, what headway are you making here? And he's going to be like, look, this guy is super powerful. He changed my name. Like, I have a name of honor now. Like, we're kind of friends now. Like, I made relationships with different warlords. The English are, he's putting the English in a great position, not just himself. Because remember, right. 
there are there are many ships at this time in the world. In the 1600s, this is when America was discovered. This was when so many places were colonized and discovered. So all it's going to take is a few English ships to come by. And Blackthorn is a way bigger threat than just a guy walking around that doesn't like to bathe. <laughs> right, right. You gotta think long term, man. The long game. You uh I was about to make long that game. point. Uh, but you know, it's just like, dude, you know you're gonna want to come back. You know, you're not mm-hmm. wanna listen to Martine and either. He's like, we, we can't ruin the relationship, man. You know, st- stop this, stop this. Okay, like just yeah. just work together. But it, it ended up working out. Um I, I laughed my butt off though. Uh Black Dawn was just looking at them sail away. He was like, Man, F that. We are going to, you know, hit the drum. Oh, let's go. You go. I go. (laughs) Yes. I loved that moment because they were headed towards those those rocks, man. Because I actually at first I thought those rocks were were other guys in boats. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, no, like it's rocks. And he was like just the desperation in his eyes of like, I, I have a two year old daughter that I've never met because I'm here and I believe in whatever I can do here. I didn't know that, Kim. Uh, keep going. I'm sorry. My, my bad. What? <laughs> I, I, when what? You said, I thought you were saying, saying I, it, it, I, it, I thought you were saying that you had a two-year-old daughter. I was like, well, I didn't know you had kids, but you're talking about Blackthorn. No. My, my bad. My bad. <laughs> my, my bad. No. Yeah. no. I have, <laughs> no, I don't have kids. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Lordy God. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> I love talking about myself. <laughs> no, but Blackthorn, like, he, the, just the desperation in his face of like, oh, you're just going to leave me behind as far yeah. as I'm come? And we're at the point where you're not calling me a dog or, no, I'm getting somewhere with, with my goal. Like, I went from a ship of 500 men to five men, one of which you cooked. Like, <laughs> I'm not giving up. <laughs> yeah. Bing the drum. Right. Let's right. go. Yeah. I'm gonna Bing die on the rock. I might as well die trying. And 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 everybody had mad respect. He could have been like, "Oh, yeah. you left me." Oh, right. 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 No, no, you go. I go. Somebody needs to put that on a shirt to bang the drum. You know, or you go, I go. <laughs> I, I I would definitely wear that. My only, my only little criticism about that scene is all of the fishermen that was blocking the view, the 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 pathway, they had bows and arrows with them, and the people on the ship didn't concern, didn't seem to be concerned with getting shot. I don't know why they wasn't shooting at them either, um, you know. But I, I I don't know. Maybe they just didn't want to get ran over. I don't like, know. I don't know if it was just a futile, like a few fishermen thinking they could do something. Like this isn't Dunkirk. You're not going to make that much of an impact, bro. Like. But yeah. I mean, they're there in the dark. Like they thought they were gonna do. Like Ishido, it might have also just been Ishido, you know, putting up whatever defense he could, um, yeah. and being like, and so let's get people in the water, and let's get people at the harbor. Like let's cover all our bases. I don't care if it makes sense or not. Let's get someone there. And when I tell you that ship crushed them, bro. Yeah. yeah. I felt so sad. I was like, oh, your little boat. Yeah, yeah. It was. I, I, I like. <laughs> I don't know technology as far as um, directing a ship, but they kept saying five points this way or that way. And uh, the captain was like, you gave him the edge. And, you know, Rodrigo was lying. He already had the edge, but he was looking at him like, you know, with, like, you know what? I, I respect you. You know what I'm saying? You want you yeah. to bow down and die. You fought your way out of this. You know, I'm going to let you make it. And so uh, that, that was pretty cool right there. Uh, that was. But. We we got the next scene uh, where Hatsu uh, Hasumaru comes through and was like, "Hey, just want to let you know we talked about this earlier with the war jaw bowing down. I uh, got this piece of paper right here. Uh, we quit. Oh, I love that moment. <laughs> and, and what I also find hilarious in the show. I don't even know if it's intentional. Is Ashido is constantly losing, and the look on his face, his facial expressions of like, <laughs> it looks like they did get through." And and when Hasumaru comes through with the paper, he's just like, you know, that it was. It, was, <laughs> it doesn't matter. This this paper doesn't matter. You know, we're going to impeach him. And it's like, well, before the taco died, he said that you need five uh, regions to make a vote, and you only have four. So, um, Ashido was like, because. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a lot of laughs. I love that bit. Yeah, 
And not only that, uh, Ayami and uh, Sheeta were arguing before, before he came in. They're like, if you would have waited, I would have delivered uh, Tasu uh, uh, Toranaga to you on a silver platter. And, you know, they're going back and forth. And so uh, I, it, I told you these regions, it was yeah. much to break them up because yeah. they're yeah. all like if, if um, Tycho hadn't died, you know, we wouldn't be in this position. These are guys right. that were so they were so happy when that man died. Are yeah. you kidding me? Yeah. They they yeah. all they are all vying for Shogun. They're all vying for that seat, and so yeah. they're they're playing chess as well. Like, yeah, I'll be in this little group over here because this works, and we can vote this guy out. But after even they did, they would have successfully gotten rid of Tornaga, like killed him. Now you four are going to start fighting because now we're down to one. And mm-hmm. this ain't no boy band. We're not going in as a group. We're trying to get down to one man. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, they're, they're playing them against each other. And I just love when he went in with that moment of like, actually, you don't have enough votes. Yeah. Sorry, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> like, that was a great moment. Yeah. 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 It was a great moment. Because now, so- now it turns into an every man for himself situation. Mm-hmm. When the band breaks up, it turns into who can come out with a great single. And we're not wonder, all Justin Timberlake, so. <laughs> I wonder if Ashido is going to know that um, Ayami was trying to kill his men in the forest. You know, I, I thought he finds out, but he, you know, care less about it. You know, like, say, hey, bro. I don't you know, know because, about, you know, that was interesting. Because another thing is, is, don't forget, Ishido didn't know that Yabushige didn't know about Toronaga. True, true. Because he said he was Remember, him. Yabushige yeah. was like, hey, next time you got a plan, you want to let true. me in on it? He had it's no true. idea. Very true. So Ishido, in Ishido's eyes, he's like, oh, now it's me and you. Like, now we yeah. are not in any kind of partnership. You deceive me. Right. And the conversation is, I didn't, bro, I didn't even know. Right. And right. he doesn't know he didn't know. That's right. This is true. I forgot about that. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, we had this last scene right here, man. Um, the barbarian gets promoted to Haramoto, which is pretty honorable. Uh, he he it looked like he he was scared, like Casper. You know, when he's like, "Hey, man, these these priests over here, they gave me these books about you. Uh, yeah. It's gonna take you a time to translate it." And the thing is, uh, Toronaka doesn't care. He doesn't care. He I mean, care. the no. the, the uh, engine could be the devil to him, and he's like, "Well, he's still benefiting me, so I'm just going to overlook this and be like, yeah, they say that you're bad, and we have the proof right here.' But it's it's going to take us a long time to translate it. So until then, you know, why don't you teach me how to swim, buddy? And you know, get a regiment and and excuse me, teach them uh, all of your war tactics from the west or whatever. You know, when they was calling him out, uh, Blackburn was looking like, "Oh shit, I'm." I'm out here by myself. They're gonna throw me overboard, you know. But uh, he get, he promoted him. I know he wasn't expecting that. Uh, but how do you feel I about know. the swim lessons that they they went through? It looks like they're really. Uh, Let me tell you something. Between them, I I love that, and and don't forget it was the diving lesson because Toronaga challenged him was like, "I'll swim you to the shore." Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He can swim. He just yeah. wanted to know how to dive. Right. But I thought that message was. I thought that moment was funny. I thought it was beautiful. I thought it was just a great reminder of like, this is not a white savior situation. Definitely. This is why this is why certain countries have the history they have because someone came in that was an outsider and taught us this and now we do this. There is a, there is a beautiful synchronicity about cultures saying, teach me how you do this. Okay, teach me how you do this. Uh, how do you guys do this? How do you guys do this? There's something to be learned from each other. And I really thought that was a beautiful moment because that was holy for Tornaga to ask this, you know, uh, five minutes ago, he was a barbarian, to ask him to teach him to do anything. Because a a leader, of course you wanna, (laughs) I don't know, I don't wanna say it well. You You wanna seem like you can do everything. So I thought that was a really beautiful, cool moment where they were like we're at the point where we need all the knowledge all the strategy we can get and let's just show each other like what we can do and teach me how you do the diving thing i thought that was a really cool moment i love that he made him do it 30 times that was (laughs) hilarious 
yeah, but yeah. but that's this is this is how um civilizations get from one step to another many times it's by not killing every outsider that comes in but going okay i think we can learn from each other and 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 with that i think that was a great way that that final scene i thought that was really cool and beautiful and that i think keeps with the spirit of shogun that this isn't about me 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 us 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 this is about like how can we come together as people who don't understand each other and come to a common understanding that brings us to the next level because now now that he's out of osaka and now that he's out of the lord of regents i mean the next step is getting his wife out because that's another issue like she's still there so that's going to be interesting to see how she gets out of there. But I think, I think like every episode, Brandon, the stakes get higher and higher because now that he's out of Osaka, it is on and cracking because we don't know what's at Edo. We haven't been to Edo yet. So we don't know what his army looks like. We don't know what other loyal servants he has. We don't know what other, um, you know, mining towns are like, you know, we're not a part of you, but you know, if it's time to go, like, like say the word, like, let's go. Like, uh, the stakes are just every episode. It just goes up and up. I'm loving yeah. this. Yeah, I'm loving it too. Are those your final thoughts? Those are my final thoughts, bro. Love it, love it. Um, I'm I, I, I share your sentiment. Um, the stakes are getting higher and higher with each episode. <clears throat> Not only was this entertaining as far as the politics, the infighting, the literal fighting, and the comedy that we talked about, it's just another great episode. And I'm really, really loving this show. But ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that is going to wrap it up for me and Kimberly's Shogun episode recap titled Tomorrow is Tomorrow. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the episode as much as we did. But yes, down in that comment section below, let us know what you thought about the episode, your likes, your dislikes, if you loved it, if you hated it. Also, what you loved about our commentary as well. We will be back same time, same place next week for episode four, The Eightfold Fence. And I cannot wait for everyone to see the next episode. It, it was a doozy. Kimberly, again, thank you so much for being here. If you love what we both had to say, you can follow us on social media. Her handle is on the screen as well as mine. Uh, her information is in the description box of this video. And here is her channel tab as well. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Kimberly, in 30 seconds, what can the people out there look forward to on your channel in 30 seconds? Yeah, definitely. I've got some great content on there um, about volunteerism and the power of volunteerism. If you want to watch some of my older episodes on What's Good, Kimberly. I also have a new podcast coming called The Film That Made You dot dot dot, where I'm talking to people who have been inspired by a film to make a major life change. And I want to talk to you guys. If you know anyone, if you have anyone in your life, your uncle, your friend, if that's you, whether you change your major in school, you adopted a baby, you you took up a new sport, took up martial arts, whatever it is that inspired you that came from a film, I want to talk about it on my podcast. So reach out to me, catch me on Instagram or my YouTube. And thank you so much. And last thing, you guys, let's get Brandon to 50,000 subscribers. Yes, let's do that, guys. If you do, you're going to get movie reviews, spoiler movie reviews, series reviews, a weekly superhero live show, a superhero comic book live show, weekly movie news roundup, and I'm covering Shogun. As you can see right now, I got my full non-spoiler review for the whole season, episode one and episode two with Kimberly Curran. This is episode three, and like I said, we'll be back next week for episode four. But guys, again, we just both want to thank you so much for tuning in. And I'm right there at um, 40, 49,700. Help me get to 50K. But before you go, guys, don't forget that I'm B. Avery. That's Kimberly. And that's just our opinion. Peace out. And we'll see you next time.